Chris Guns here with Brandon Gonzalez, fresh off his HBO debut. Draw with Thomas Ustazen. Most people thought it was a win. Brandon, I'm sorry that the fight was as close as it was and, and it didn't go the way you wanted to at the end. Tell me, how, how are you feeling today? You know, I'm feeling good. Uh, you know, the thing that makes it a little bit easier, like I was saying, is the, you know, just the tremendous amount of support that I've got from the media, as well as, uh, you know, everybody in attendance of the fight, you know, spectators that watched it on HBO, uh, you know, reaching out through social media to me, the promoter of the show, the network, HBO, uh, you know, so that, that, that helps me with Bane a little bit of uh, receiving such a, you know, uh, a disappointing decision. Yeah, you came out of nowhere. You always seem like the guy who comes out of nowhere. Did it, you did it again on Saturday. I just want to give the people a chance to get to know you. You're, you're too good to be a mystery. And, and tell me about yourself. Where were, where were you born, Brandon? I was actually born out of state in uh, Portland, Oregon. I moved to California when I was uh, pretty young. I think I was four or five years old. We came to California, uh, various uh, spots throughout the Bay Area before, uh, after high school. I uh, moved to the Trace of California, and I moved out further to Northern California and uh, Sacramento. So moved around a lot. There's an young throughout the throughout the city, the Bay Area, and then finally uh, settled down in Sacramento. Yeah, so the you just moved around with your family. Tell me about the Gonzalez household. Who who was in it, and what was that like? Yeah, uh, you know, pretty pretty small family, but a strong foundation. Thank God, my mother and father, and I have an uh, older brother. You know, it's pretty much just up for uh, growing up and, you know, kind of moving around. We're a real, real, real close family, but at the same time, just the immediate family for the most part. Yeah, you didn't find boxing until you were 19. What kind of kid were you? Were you in any sports before you got into boxing? Yeah, I played uh, all kinds of sports, basketball, football. Football was probably my main uh, sport. I uh, did it through, as a, you know, since I was eight years old, all the way through high school. So uh, an injury to prevent me from uh, playing my senior year. You know, basketball, baseball, soccer, track, uh, yeah, pretty much throughout. We're just athletic growing up, period. Yeah, did a little bit of everything. And, and what kind of kid were you in school? Were you in the school, too, or just sports? Yeah, you know, I, I, I was, in, I was in, the, in the school, uh, you know, a little, you know, just growing up. You get there a lot of distractions going on. And, you know, I fed into a little bit of the distractions. But at the same time, you know, I finished school, got my high school diploma. And, uh, you know, just recently started up a little bit of uh, college as well so for the first time since I graduated. So, uh, you know, just it is all part of growing. So what are you looking to major in now? You're back in college. What are you looking to do? Uh, looking to do something <laughs> probably in business marketing. Eventually, you know, I got a hectic schedule, so it's hard to really set them down. I did a little bit of uh, online credit this last semester, and I'm looking to do something in the fall as well. Uh, you know, just basically scheduling everything around. Uh, the boxing, so you know it can be difficult at times, but uh, at the same time, I'm still trying to get it, get it done. What made you think of boxing at 19? Right, you were 19 when you first went into a boxing. Yeah. What made you even think about it? 19, 19 years old. I was always a fan, a casual fan. I guess you could say I watched boxing coming up. You know, we'd always throw on the gloves during the summertime uh, with the with the neighborhood kids and everything. So it was always something I was involved in, but just never had a chance to actually you know, do it officially through a boxing gym with the coach and things of that nature. And actually, when I got to Sacramento, that was the first thing that I did uh, was get inside a boxing gym because I knew the opportunity was there. So I found the uh, Capital Boxing Gym, which is, a, you know, a, a well-known gym in Sacramento. And that's when I began uh, training at. Yeah, like I said, you kind of came out of nowhere, and I was at the fight, so I didn't get to see it on HBO. I watched a, I watched a little bit of it when I got home, but... Tell, tell me, the first time you went into a gym, is that is that the first time you met your soon-to-be wife or the lady who'd be your wife? Yeah, tell me yeah how you, first tell time me I met her was uh, inside of a boxing gym. And then right. she was uh, skipping rope as I was walking into the gym one day. And I just, uh, you know, you kind of pocketed the feeling uh, being inside of the gym with everybody in it. And, uh, you know, long story short, it kind of grew from, from then on. And your wife's name was Janelle. She she was a fighter. How many fights she have, and how good was she? Uh, you know, she, she actually corrected me. I thought it was like six or seven, but she said it was about thirteen. I took a <laughs> took a took a punch in the arm for that. <laughs> when she saw when she when she saw it on HBO, 
So uh, yeah, she bet she had 13 fights. She's been amateur. She, uh, you know, she uh, competed in the, in the local circuit as well as uh, you know a couple qualifiers get the national as well. So uh, she she uh, she did, she did well. She 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 was she's athletic as well. You know, she's been very, very active, does CrossFit. Uh, and go to the gym occasionally, but not, you know, to when she competed. And you help keep her sharp when she beats on you, I guess, huh? <laughs> yeah, she, she keeps my defense sharp, for sure. <laughs> and like I said earlier, you're known now as coming out of nowhere, but you did it in the amateurs, too. 19 years old, and you build a record of 56 wins with seven losses. You became the number one ranked amateur in the U.S. in 2005. And that same year, when you went to Northern California, you won the Northern California Boxing Association Fighter of the Year, 2005 U.S. Championship Finalist, 2005 Golden Gloves Regional Champion, 2005 Golden Gloves State Champion. You won the silver medal in Puerto Rico at the Cheo Aponte Tournament, real big out there. You won the gold medal versus Mexico in 2005, USA versus Korea. You got a silver you went to Ireland or fought Ireland, and you got a silver there. So 2005 was an amazing year for you. Take me back to 2005. What kind of year was that for you? You know, it was definitely a busy year. It was probably, uh, you know, one that stands out to me in my amateur career. One, you know, I did take uh, the number one line heavyweight in the country, and I was the leading candidate to go to the, the Olympics in that uh, quadrennial. So it was definitely a big year. Uh, you know, it was just, it was just the time of, you know, same as now, hungry, uh, climbing through the ranks. I wanted to be the number one guy. When I got there, I wanted to stay there. And, you know, I did everything, everything necessary to, uh, you know, to stay, stay in that position once I obtained it. So it's just, uh, you know, dedication to my craft and, you know, hard work and discipline, uh, as far as, um, you know, same thing that I, you know, that I take uh, with me now in training and, and my life. And boxing being the global game that it is, you get to see places that you would have never got a chance to see if you didn't find boxing. Yeah. What are some of the places that you went to that you're happy you got a chance to see? Um, you know, I, I, it was more, I got to travel all over the country for the different national tournaments again. Uh, you know, I got a passport for uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, you know, uh, first time I was on an airplane was because of boxing. Or, and, you know, at 19 years old, I never, never flew on a plane uh, prior to that. Hmm. So, you know, just, just all over the country. Not too many uh, international outside of the country. You know, a lot of them came to us in the tournaments that I competed in. You know, I was having a, a family at that point. So, you know, making the international trips were, were kind of hard for me, difficult for me, you know, being that I had a baby on the way. So I, I passed up a lot of opportunities, but, you know, no regrets. It was, uh, it was just where I was at that point in time. Yeah. And 2006 was another great year for you. U.S. Championship Regional and you won that, uh, and you won the Golden Gloves Regional. What made you decide to turn pro when you did? Uh, I just think it goes back to the latter where I was just speaking about, uh, you know, I, I, I had a baby on the way, mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, I had, my family was growing, so, you know, I had to start thinking of, uh, you know, ways to bring an in income, and I was definitely one of them. So, just bearing with where I was at that point in time, you know, people I was, that were handling thought it was best, uh, best interest to turn a uh, professional year prior to the Olympics. And, and you did turn pro. Do you remember who you turned pro in your, in your first fight against and what the result was? Uh, it was a uh, first or second round knockout. I don't remember his name, but I do know who he is. He's, uh, he's, he's local. He's right there from Oakland. So, you know, I've seen him a, a few times since we fought, but uh, he's an Ethiopian kid, and uh, yeah, so that was uh, a pro that you right in Sacramento. It was definitely a great time. Yeah, it was a crazy name, and, and just a notch on your belt. No need to remember, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, and soon after turning pro, you you trained under a uh, legend, the man known as, as more for, I guess, training Diego Corrales than anybody, his stepfather, Ray Woods. Tell me about Ray Woods and, and training with him. Right. Ray Woods is an incredible individual. Uh, he taught me so much uh, as far as my, you know, my boxing game goes. And, uh, you know, me and him remain close friends today. We still speak. Uh, you know, he's just a, he's a great guy. He's, he's a great trainer as well. You know, him and his wife, Oprah Woods, 
Uh, you know, I trained with Ray for you know a great good portion of my career, and you know I learned I definitely learned a lot from him. And uh, you know I have to say you know I've been privileged to work with uh, multiple world class trainers in Laywood, Jeff Mayweather, and now uh, Virgil Hunter as well. So you know I've been extremely fortunate to be you know have that type of pedigree. Yeah. Your early fights, you you turned pro and you went against the usual suspects. Nobody too impressive. And in your sixth pro fight, you fought Daniel Stanislavjevic, I believe his name was, and, and it ended in a no contest in the first round. What happened in that fight? Uh, it was the early it was a clash of heads, and he uh, had a, a nasty gash over his eye, and uh, you know the referee decided to uh, stop the fight based on that cut, so he uh, considered a no contest. Mm-hmm. And you returned a couple months later, and you went back to your normal winning ways. You continue to fight lesser guys still, just feeling your way through the pro ranks. And not until your 60, you took you took on the experienced Ossie Duran in your 16th fight. Pretty close fight with the veteran. What do you remember about your night with Ossie Duran? It was a good night. First time, uh, you know, on premium cable, uh, Showtime, Showbox card. I uh, was coming off a long layoff, uh, but again, it was a great opportunity to, uh, you know, to showcase my talent. And, uh, you know, Ashley Duran, he's a veteran. He does all the tricks, tough, durable guy. He's going to be there for the duration of the fight. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we went out, and he, I think he was from, he was from New Jersey. He went to his hometown, and, uh, you know, we pulled out the decision. And that was your first fight on... on- uh, television that that would be seen by many people. Was there any added nerves going into that fight, being that it was on Showtime? Yeah, I think a little bit. You know, it was my first time there. Uh, you know, you, 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 the, the feeling is always there, but you learn how to uh, control it. As the experience comes like the, the nerves are going to come in and out, uh, regardless. But you learn to deal with it as you you know become more experienced with fighting on on uh, you know situations like that, like this HBO fight that I just had. You know, same type of nerves, but same time, I knew how to control them this time around. So that was, that was the first time for me, and, you know, it's just an experience. It was, it was part of my growth as a professional. And you mentioned the great trainers you had the opportunity to work with. This was your first fight with, with Virgil Hunter, wasn't it? Uh, no, we, we, we had uh, three or four fights together, actually. No, Ossie Duran, the Ossie Duran fight. Was that your first yeah, fight? Yeah, and, and tell me about... When you when you met and started working with Virgil Hunter, what made you feel like he was the the man for you at that time? I, mean, I think his whole pro- approach to training uh, what always appealed to me. You know, he's a, he's, a, he's a teacher. You know what I mean? He has a lot of he has an old school mentality, but he's also embraced the new uh, you know scientific tip, the aspect of training uh, as well. So you know, you get you get the best of both worlds in that sense. It's where he's going to push you to the limit. But he understands about uh, nutrition, um, different 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 types of training uh, that are going to help be crucial to a, to a boxer's training. Uh, so very specific to uh, you know what we do inside the ring. So I, I think that's what you know just his whole uh, his whole type of training. It's, it's, it's schooling. You know what I mean? Every sparring session, every training session, it's a, it's a schooling, and you're learning. You're learning. Uh, not only what you're doing, but why you're doing it, and also uh, specific situations that you're going to use what he's teaching you. So it just kind of it, it, it was a good fit for me in my type of learning style, and the way he teaches was just a, a, a good fit as far as uh, I was concerned. Yeah, he's definitely one of the best in the game, and that was your second and final fight of 2011. Your first and only fight at 2012 was against Eli Augusta, Augustama. Mm-hmm. And was there anything happening that prevented you from being more active, or is it just the way you wanted it because you do have so many other things you're juggling, too? No, the, the, that single fight happened because uh, there was an injury. Uh, I think that, that fight was in June. Uh, there was an injury, I think, uh, we got to the beginning of that year that I was supposed to fight. Uh, due to a hamstring, I had a January show box date. But again, I pulled toward my hamstring, and that kept me out for some time. So uh, that was probably uh, contributed to the reason I only fought one time that year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you did get cut in that fight. That cut had nothing to do with uh, you. Well, I was actually the cut was actually one that reopened. I was cut uh, in training 
about a week before that fight. And I had got it uh, glued shut so I could move forward with the fight. And it re actually reopened. And another cut opened right next to it. So I had two cuts over the same eyelid, one from, from training. And then also another one from the end, but the after of the fight that not only reopened the original cut, but uh, also a new one. So uh, that's what happened with that. Yeah, tell me, tell me about your fight in January with Don Mouton. You're stepping it up now, and on ESPN being seen by more people than you'll ever be seen at, at that point. Tell, tell me about that. Yeah, take me back. Don Mouton, another Aki Durant type guy. Not as many fights, but still. He was determined, and, uh, you know, he was trying to make the best out of the opportunity as well. Uh, durable guy, kept coming forward, didn't want to take no for an answer, so we just had to, uh, you know, we ended up pounding down a unanimous decision on him, and, uh, you know, he, he's a tough customer, comes to fight, and came in shape. So, uh, that was no learning experience on how to deal with that type, of, uh, that type of fighter. And a lot was made of it on Saturday night on HBO. Never, You never had 10 rounds. You never went 10 rounds before, but... Here you are on HBO going against a freak six foot four super middleweight Thomas Ustazen on Saturday night. How, how do you feel going into this fight? Do you, do you feel like you're kind of up against it, being being that you never been ten rounds and you're fighting a guy so awkward and, and six foot four? It's tough as super middleweight. Do you feel how, how do you feel going into that fight? You know, there was a lot of factors that were coming into that fight. We you know, we're, again, like you mentioned, the style of the opponent, six four south ball, no one, no one's really jumping out to uh, and volunteering to to fill that slot, fighting a guy like that. But at the same time, you know, we were fighting on the you know Slaughter's card on HBO, huge network. But at the same time, uh, you know, my preparation, I was so confident in the preparation for my fight that I knew that none of that was going to matter. You know what I mean? I was, I was in great shape. You know, I had so many different resources that I used out here in the Bay Area. I feel we have the best resources out here with, uh, you know, Remy Corchimini, my strength, uh, actually my Olympic track coach. I got Tony Brady, who was a new addition to my team, the strength and conditioning. That was my first time working with him in this last fight. The nutrition, uh, you know, with Victor Conte. Uh, so, you know, I utilized all, all of these uh, resources that I haven't used uh, for previous fights. And, I, you know, I felt great. You know what I mean? I felt great. I made it way easier than I have in the previous fights. After moving up to 68, I was on weight about a week before the fight, and I was just kind of, you know, uh, controlling that, that, that last week and a half of the fight. So everything was just, was just, it was just a great camp. And, you know, I felt great. My mindset was great going into the fight. So, you know, all, that kind of out, outweighed everything that was coming against me uh, going into that fight. So I, I definitely felt great. And it's really amazing because you did get into boxing so late, and this kid was in it since he was a kid. So, it, to me, it looked like you had a lot of fun in there. It seemed like every time you hit him, you, you made him, like, blow in the breeze, like almost like a flagpole. And, and it just seemed like you had a lot of fun. Describe the fight and, and just take me through the fight, the fight itself. Yeah, well, you know, I had excellent spawn for the, for the fight. I had Demetrius Andrade who's, uh, you know, obviously tall, South Paul as well, not quite as tall, but he's a lot more elusive, speed of hands, speed of feet, he's a little bit better than uh, Ustuzian. Uh, and we had another guy from uh, Dimitri's his hometown, who was a real, another real tough guy with a good left hand. So as far as that goes, that, that was excellent to have as far as preparing for the bout. But going into the bout, I knew I was sparring with people that were, you know, it, it, top notch. So uh, I knew he wasn't going to show me anything that, the left-handers that I was boxing with um, were going to show me. So uh, going into the fight, it, it was I saw I saw those punches coming. Uh, you know, I controlled the range whether it was uh, inside or outside. You know, uh, I was I was I was making him come to me when usually he forced his opponents to come to him. And you know, I think I cut his I cut his punch count in half for the fight. Some mm -hmm. people say he throws up to 100 punches in round. Yep. And I think he, he might have thrown 400 in the total, the total fight. So I think we, you know, we controlled, we controlled the ring, the ring generalship and about, uh, you know, dictated the action and we landed the more, uh, clean, effective blow. You know, I, I, I don't feel like he landed anything significant until, uh, round six or seven. Other than that, you know, I carried a lot of the shots and, uh, you know, I countered them, countered them real well when he didn't want to come forward. So, again, like you said, I had a lot of fun in there. 
And I think uh, we definitely dictated the, the pace of the fight. And six foot four with a, I mean, pretty nice jab. I mean, the guys in South Africa usually have that similar style that they have schooled on the basics real well. How difficult was it to, to fight a guy that tall with a nice jab like that? Did, did it present any problems or I guess not to the later rounds? That's what it looked like to me anyway. Did, did you feel like you were, did you feel a little gassed towards the end? Having, Say again? Did you feel a little gassed towards the end? Like it looked like you, you kind of, the fight was going your way totally till the end like you did mention. Did, did it feel like you were getting tired at the end? Well, you know, I felt like, I mean, we were working. So, I mean, of course, you know, when you're when you're leaving it all in the ring and, you know, you're exerting yourself to, the, you know, to the whole around, you want to make sure you leave everything out there, you know, being that the, the type of opportunity this was, I didn't want to take, I didn't want to leave anything a chance and say could have, would have, should have towards the end. So, you know, of course, when it was the ninth and the tenth round, you know, you're, pulling, you're digging it out and uh, doing what you got to do to, to finish, the, finish the bout. But, you know, my conditioning was... Uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was enough to uh, get me through the fight where I felt. So I wasn't to the point to where it was affecting my performance. It was just that, you know, I was, I was leaving it all out there, leaving nothing to chance. So. Yeah, and going in the fight, I know you're, you're feeling confident, but was there anything in the back of your mind knowing that, that this guy has experience going in the later rounds and you didn't? Uh, you know, you just take it around at a time. It doesn't really matter how many rounds the fight is. You know, because obviously I've done more in training, so you know you're able to go, go, uh, you know, the distance, uh, that distance at least, you know, when you're going 10 or 12 rounds with three different people, you know, three, three, three fresh individuals, uh, you're, you, you, you're, not, you're not really thinking about that. You're just thinking about taking it around at a time and making the necessary adjustments as the fight, as the fight progresses. So, uh, you know, the experience is nothing because the, the fact of the matter is that he's been 10, 12, Round, but he hasn't been 10, 12 rounds of you. So, you know, you're able to, you know, like I said, go to the body, break him down, and he may not be as fresh as he is with somebody who's not offering as much resistance. So, you know, everything everything plays a factor in a situation like that. And Virgil Hunter is a master at getting the best out of each fighter that he trains. He changes his whole style up according to who he's got in the corner with him. He gives, you, he gives every fighter what they need. Everybody noticed the whispering and the calmness is that is that what works best for you? Yeah, I mean, I for the, I think with me and Virgil, that fight was probably the best chemistry we had. Um, probably I'd say in the gym or even in a fight at this uh, up to this point. So you know, whatever he felt was necessary, um, I think worked. You know, he was, you know, I we, I stuck to the game plan that we set in the beginning, and I went with the adjustments that he was asking for during the fight. He was extremely clean with uh, my performance, uh, as you can see, in the fight when they uh, announced that it was a draw, you know, you could see his reaction. Mm. You know, he, I think he threw, a, he threw a water bottle or a towel down on the ground, you know, uh, expressing his frustration. Mm. So, you know, I just think that he thought the same thing as I did, that we, you know, we clearly uh, won seven to eight to ten of the round, uh, even with it being in, uh, you know, the promoter's, uh, the promoter's territory. So... I think that stuff goes to show that, you know, we uh, got the results we were looking for regardless of the strategy or, or tactics that he was using uh, as far as the list or not go. It was funny just just seeing Virgil Hunter, like, being so calm, and then he just threw that towel down at, at the end. It, it was yeah. funny because he, he just looked like it, it was just out of the blue. He was so calm throughout the whole fight, and then he just threw it down. What did, what did he say to you after the fight was over? Did did he did he say anything that that you did wrong? Did he? How did he? How did he talk yeah. at the end? What did he talk about? Of course, of course, there's always going to be uh, areas of uh, you know areas that we can focus on to you know to move forward. Originally, you know, he 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 expressed to me right after the bell rang that he thought we won the fight. He expressed me throughout the fight, he listened in the corner that we were winning the fight uh, handily. And uh, again, the, you know the, the criticism or the you know the feedback, the, the critical feedback that he gave me. You know, uh, we take that, keep that between ourselves, and we kind of you know use it, take it to the gym and, and build off of it. You know, so uh, yeah, he was he was pleased with the performance. So, so I, you know, I was happy, and he was happy. And, and so, so you didn't think that the fight was anyone's fight going into that last round? You thought you definitely had it in the bag. Uh, again, I take every round as uh, 
you know, as a as separate, just how they, just how they score the card. So I'm, I, my, my objective is to win every round, uh, you know, uh, round by round to, to win the round convincingly. So I, you know, even though I felt that I was winning the whole fight, I'm still going to treat the round as if I still have to win it because that's just, that's just, uh, you know, the game plan. Yeah. And, and I asked you what Virgil said to you after the fight. What did, what did Thomas Ustazian say to you? Did he say anything to you in the ring? Oh, uh, no, no, you know, typical, uh, you know, just good fight after the touch blood and mm-hmm. things of that nature. And that, that was it, man. That's when I think, I mean, I, it looks on his whole entire point of faith. I think that he uh, felt he, he lost the fight as well. And again, you know, people from his camp uh, expressed uh, what they thought uh, about the fight as well. So I think the, the writing was on the wall. Mm-hmm. And I talked to one of his handlers after the fight, and he said, that there was already talk of a rematch happening. Did you hear any talk of a rematch? Um, you, know? you know, just on the social media that a rematch you would. Um, I haven't heard anything official from my camp um, as of right now, but again, it's still early, so uh, anything's possible. I know uh, James Frank is going to be looking for, uh, you know, the best opportunity for my career moving forward, whether it's a rematch or something, something bigger out there. So it's nothing that you definitely have to have. To have. You don't care if you. I mean, you just you want another big fight, I'm sure. But do you kind of want Usaizen again? Um, well, I would like to clear. I mean, personally, again, I feel like I won the fight. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that you know uh, my record doesn't reflect that. Mm. But uh, you know, I, I'd be definitely open to 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 a rematch. Uh, not 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 a, not a, not against that at all. Um, at the same time, I would I would love to treat it as if uh, you know. I did get the victory and move on to something bigger and better. You know, he's a top ten opponent. Uh, you know, I would like to be uh, myself ranked in the top ten and, and possibly looking uh, moving to a title shot at the end of the year. But if that's the uh, that that's the best opportunity is the rematch with Ozuna, then I'm definitely open for that as well. And you get you get to work with Andre Ward. He spoke really highly of you during the HBO telecast. He said that you fight on the inside, you fight on the outside, you can punch. He said how athletic and strong you were. How, do, how does it? How, how is it for you working with Andre Ward and someone who accomplished everything he accomplished? What do you what do you get from Andre working with him so closely every day? I mean, I think it's not only Andre. Uh, you know, our whole stable is filled with world class fighters. Mm-hmm. So that at, that at, being around that atmosphere is only going to make your game uh, strong. You know, you see. Uh, you know, there, there, there's a lot of people, including Andre, in positions that we're all fighting to get to. So to have that so close is, is, a, is a drive, you know what I mean? Because, of course, every fighter has that competitive nature to be not only the best in the division, or, but just to be the best within your, uh, your home base, you know what I mean? So I have that drive to be, to be the best in my gym, to be the best uh, in my division to be a better man inside of the ring or whatever I'm in there with. So that's just the competitive drive that I have. So having those guys around me only uh, makes me work harder, uh, makes me more determined um, than I already am with the, if I'm by myself. So the atmosphere, you feed off that atmosphere, and it, it only makes you uh, you know, work harder. So it's a great atmosphere to be around. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a tough guy to kind of gauge Andre Ward is because he he is in the public eye on HBO and, and he's so well spoken, but he comes off kind of as as guarded too. Does he does he open up to you and give you advice? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, me and me and Andre speak. You know, when uh, when I'm in camp, you know, uh, we talk over social media or uh, via text messages. So uh, you know, uh, yeah, we speak. He offers me advice. You know, he told me, uh, you know, going in the first time. This is being HBO. He said it's different, but you're not gonna. You don't want to treat it any different. You know, it's gonna be different with the media attention that it's gonna get and things of that nature. And you know, again, I took that advice, and you know, I I kind of I kind of already knew what to expect. You know, because I've been on the scene, uh, but not as a participant, but as a spectator. So you know, you kind of knew what to expect. Uh, you know, fighting on this type of platform, HBO, and the type of attention that even been a corner. So. Uh, I was prepared. I think I was prepared mentally as well as physically for for this event. Yeah, you get to work with Andre, and you get to see Amir Khan. He's a little small to work with, but do you get to spar with Alfredo Angulo? Yeah, 
Absolutely. I box with the Angulo. I box with Demetrius. I box with Andre from time to time. So um, I get a lot of different styles, you know, athletic boxers to, you know, uh, ballers, uh, constant pressure. So we have, we have uh, you know, from 140 to super middleweight, but Jim is, Jim is packed. And, you know, we have all the sparring that we need, all the looks that we need. We have left-handers. We have uh, Fernando Blair who's in camp for some time. Uh, foul ball, so a lot, a lot of, um, a lot of different looks in, in the gym. And Andre Ward kind of cleaned out <clears throat> the whole, the whole division. It just seems like his, the only competition he got, maybe going to England to fight a, a Frotch in a rematch. Frotch is a, a great fighter too. You guys got the same trainer. If you did make it to the, to the top and you cleaned out the rest of the division that he hasn't and you just appear to be a strong possibility to be a future opponent. Would, would you ever fight Andre Ward? You know, it's funny. We talk about that in the gym, and, uh, you know, all I can say is uh, Andre knows my bike. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, anything after that, Andre knows it's, uh, the fight of a fight like of that magnitude. So that's all I can say about that. Yeah. And, and how ready do you think you are before you take on the next – the next uh, best in the, in the division, like a uh, Carl Frotch or a uh, Mikel Kessler, how how ready are you? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm ready. You know what I mean? We just took a, took on a top ten guy who was supposed to be that guy who was ready to uh, to challenge those names that you just mentioned. So I definitely think we're in the picture. I think now it's just uh, you know my team's job to maneuver me into a to a position. Um, you know, to get an opportunity like that, and you know, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm, I'm ready, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm excited. I'm extremely excited about this fight. You know, to be able to fight on HBO. Um, so I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to go backwards. I just want to. You know, I want to stay at this level and uh, you know, make my presence known. And you still might be a year away. Personally, I, I thought it was a great performance. It got kind of got close at the end. But I would love to see a rematch. I think you could take Usazen in a rematch pretty easily with the experience that you got. I appreciate your time, Brandon Gonzalez. Congratulations on your great performance, and can't wait to see you in the ring again, my man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time as well, and uh, you know, I look forward to being back on. Thanks, man. I appreciate it.